time to clean house is when the man's away. Papa says the scouring powder gives him hay fever. <laughs> Here's the hot water. Ah! It's an Indian attack. Ain't likely. Ain't the right time of the moon. <laughs> Old Eagle got himself a job with the post office. <laughs> Thank you, Old Eagle, dear. <laughs> your pa. Dear Effie, all the cattle come through good. We'll be home tomorrow. Love. Andrew. <laughs> that was sent yesterday. He'll be coming in on the noon stage. I don't think Grandpa should be taking cattle to the railroad alone. Danger in this sissy territory. I wonder what the undertaker's coming here for. Felicitations to the dear departed one. Well, that's mighty thoughtful of you, Mr. Loomis, but I think you got the wrong place. You're right, dear. None of our dear is departed. Grandpa's all right. How true. Gone to his rightful reward. A good man has what to fear in the beyond. I told you that the Indians or the rustlers would get him. Nobody's got your grandpa, dear. He's fit as a fiddle. Wrote us a letter yesterday. Yes, I understand. Sometimes it takes a while for the irrevocable fact to sink in. Especially when there's nothing to sink. I'll be waiting whenever you decide to bring in the sacred remains. <laughs> Just a moment, Mr. Loomis. Who sent this wreath? One funeral wreath for deceased Andrew Hanks, ordered and paid for by Orville Snipe, Wichita, Kansas. Orville Snipe? Heavenly days! Uh, Mr. Loomis, you take this mess of flowers and you get in your wagon and you get out of here just as quick as those animals can run. But now, no I... time for questions. Get out of sight quick. And don't you ever, ever, never utter one solitary word of this to my husband. Madam, I seldom speak to my clients. <laughs> oh, Mama, what was that all about? There's something you ain't been telling Papa and us. Some things is better left unsaid. Grandma, who is Orville Snipe? Sweetie, your grandma has always been the soul of truth. Now, if she tells us that she's got a secret and it ain't none of our business, we ain't gonna butt into her personal and private affairs. Who's Orville Snipe? <laughs> well, I suppose you gotta know sooner or later. My past has caught up with me. Chickens has come home to roost. <laughs> Orville Snipe was my beau before your papa come into my life. Orville, poor thing, just wouldn't give up. He never saw your papa, and papa never saw him. But ever since we've been married, I've been getting letters. Letters, letters, regular as clockwork. One every five years. <laughs> Grandma, 
<laughs> carrying on a correspondence with another man. Honey, a letter every five years ain't exactly a red-hot romance. <laughs> Mama, what does Orville say in these letters? Can't seem to talk about anything but your papa. Every letter begins with the same question. Is he dead yet? <laughs> Why does he want to know if Grandpa is... has passed on? Because, dear, he says when your Grandpa's out of the way, he's going to come and claim me. Over 40 years this has been going on. Orville Spunky. <laughs> Never marry. Vowed it'd be me or nobody. Letter before last, he lost his head and put X's at the bottom, so when the last letter come a couple months ago, I didn't open it. Grandma, you can't get a letter and not read it. You ought to see what it says, Mama. Dearest Effie, is he dead yet? <laughs> I'm still waiting for the good news. Last night, I dreamed your husband was eaten by a bear and you and I were married. <laughs> it was a lovely dream. Maybe it was an omen for the future. If I have not received an answer to this letter by May 1st, I will know that Andrew has finally kicked the bucket. <laughs> I will leave Wichita immediately and arrive in Wretched Saturday, May 18th. Love. Orville. The 18th? Mama, that's today. Heavenly day, so it is. We got to keep them two apart. Oh, now, don't you go worrying yourself, Mama. Even if Orville is in love with you, him and Papa are civilized men. They'll talk it out. They'll be sensible. Sure they will. <laughs> sure they will. <laughs> Sure, they will. <laughs> Harold! Harold! You've got to stop the stagecoach from Wichita. In a minute, Lucy. Harold, this is an emergency. What are you doing looking in that mirror? Practice and staring down. <laughs> the sheriff's handbook says you can avoid shooting if you can stare a man down. I think I got it. Come here, I'll show you. <laughs> All right, now, you pretend that you're a man and I'll pretend that I'm the sheriff. You are the sheriff. <laughs> God. All right, now you stare at me and I'll stare at you and I'll show you how I can overpower a criminal by just staring. Okay. Start staring. <laughs> Harold, you stop that. What did I do? You've got to get on your horse this instant and go out and stop the stage from Wichita. Why? Why? Because Orville Snipe is on it, and he's on his way to the ranch to marry Grandma. Well, your grandpa ain't gonna like that. Orville thinks grandpa's dead. That's why you have to stop the stage and warn him. You know grandpa. If those two meet, no telling what might happen. You're right, Lucy. All right, we'll see it. 11 o'clock, I can hit him off this side of Gibson Forks. There won't be any trouble at all. All right? All right. All right. Excuse me for a stop on the stage, but do you have a passenger aboard by the name of Orville Snipe? I'm Orville Snipe, young man. What is it you want? Uh, uh, well, sir, uh, I'm the wretched sheriff. I come out here to warn you. You're heading for a heap of trouble. <laughs> I'm on my way to be married. Well, that's what I mean. The husband of the woman that you're fixing to marry might have other ideas. <laughs> the husband is gone. Uh, yes, sir, I know. But he's coming back. Uh, young man, the lady's husband is dead and deceased. Where he went, they don't sell a round trip. <laughs> On your way, driver, and double speed. <laughs> Is 
as much to smell dinner. I asked the driver to speed it up. A beautiful girl is waiting for me. We're going to be married. Aren't you a little ripe for that sort of thing? <laughs> ripe? <laughs> well, I haven't fallen off the tree yet. <laughs> I've waited 40 years for this day. That miserable old coot of a husband of hers just died. Now she's going to rest her dainty head on my shoulders. <laughs> Seems to me you could wait till the carcass cools off. Mister, at my age, every minute counts. <laughs> every second, fella. <laughs> if you ever need any advice on women in marriage, just look me up. Oh, I will, I will. Thank you. <laughs> was a mite stubborn. Lucy, would you say them pinks were straight? <laughs> Mom, somebody has got to stop somebody. Grandpa will be coming home. You know what he's like when he gets back from a cattle drive. Don't worry, honey. We'll just slip a little vanilla in his bath water. <laughs> will you please listen to me? Why, we could have two jealous males fighting right in this living room. Lucy, there ain't a jealous bone in your grandpa's body. <laughs> well, what about Orville? Or was Bones ain't so sure of. <laughs> what if he shoots, Grandpa? Oh, I don't think there's going to be any trouble, dear. Orville was proper raised. He read books and give tutoring on the flute. And everybody knows the flute tutor ain't a shooter. <laughs> <gasps> Somebody's coming. What if it's Orville? It's your Grandpa, dear. Orville walks dainty. <laughs> Got the place all prissied up. Preacher coming? No, dear, but we're expecting a visitor from Wichita. Excuse me, I have to go wash my hair. This visitor from Wichita happened to be a fella? Well, yes, dear, you could say sort of a kind of a fella. Uh, pardon me, Papa, I think I'll wash my hair, too. <laughs> Strikes me there's a heap of hair washing going on around here. Have he? There's female conniving going on in this house. <laughs> I can smell it. Well, Andrew, dear, there can't be no conniving unless you got someone to connive against. And you know Lucy and Henrietta and me ain't conniving against each other. <laughs> if he is a female, you're middle and fair. But when it comes to beating around the bush, you ain't worth a tinker's darn. <laughs> oh, dang it, say what you gotta say. Not when you got your hackles up. Effie, I ain't had my heckles up in years, and you know it. <laughs> Andrew, like I was saying, we're expecting a visitor. Dude from Wichita. A gentleman from Wichita. <laughs> Reeks of sarsaparilla and shoe polish. <laughs> I sat on the stage with him, all the way from Sorry Water to Richard. <laughs> Why is that dude coming here? Andrew, dear, there's something I gotta tell you. <laughs> so that's why Orville's coming here today, because I didn't answer his last letter. It was nothing to get head up about. I ain't head up. I'm just looking forward to seeing that fruit to his face. <laughs> Remember, Andrew, Orville thinks you're dead. So when he comes, you explain. <laughs> I'm looking for, uh... Well, what are you doing here? I live here. Oh, yes, of course. You must be Effie's brother-in-law. <laughs> Brother of her deceased husband, right? <laughs> Wrong. I'm the deceased husband. <laughs> it's one of the charms of the place. We got the liveliest corpses in the county. <laughs> <laughs> but you're alive. Yeah, but how? Why? Oh, how do you, Mr. Snipe? I'm Henrietta Hanks. Oh, how do you do, young lady? Uh, your father is a most inconsiderate man. Oh? 
For 40 years, I have waited for him to be trampled by one of his cows or struck by lightning or, or just plain keel over. <laughs> and now when I think that he has done the decent thing and that my hopes are soaring, I find him like this. <laughs> Alive. <laughs> what would you do if you was him? Well, I mean, under the circumstances, the proper thing for him to do is to do away with himself. <laughs> Mr. Snipe, I gotta say, in all honesty, your thinking don't appeal to me. Well, that's because you're thinking only of your father. <laughs> uh, he's had your mother for over 40 years. Now, don't you think it's time I had a turn? <laughs> I... The answer to that is no. I ain't going to turn Effie over to you after she's done all her fattening up on my food. I am a determined man, Mr. Hanks. And if necessary, I shall fight. Suit yourself. Fight now is nine to five and half a day Saturdays. <laughs> Very well. Primitive though it may be, we'll settle this with guns. We'll see who is the best man. <laughs> best man. <laughs> Good day. <laughs> what well, is that Orville leaving? Yes, Mama. I didn't get to see him at all. I got a feeling he'll be back. He's gonna fight for you. With guys? <laughs> we were a talking flute tootin'. <laughs> uh, hello, Mr. Snipe. Well, hello, Sheriff. Uh, I'd like to apologize for butting into your private affairs like I did, but I sure didn't want to see you tangled with Mr. Hanks. Oh, well, I appreciate the interception. Oh, I well, would like to have a beer, sir. Well, I'm not in the mood for it, but I'll blow the fuzz off the top. All right, sir. Uh, Amo, would you bring Mr. Snipe a beer, please? I imagine you must be kept pretty busy keeping law and order around this town, hmm? Looks like you've got an awful lot of rough characters to deal with. Oh, well, sure do. Thank you. See this man sitting behind us here at the table? That's hanging Judge Slattery. He not only hangs people, but he's real dishonest, too. <laughs> and the man down at the end of the bar, he's one of our local gunslingers. His name is Patch Portis. Look at the notches on his gun. Gunslinger, huh? That means he's uh, proficient with the gun, is it? Yes, sir. He's got credentials in every cemetery between here and Dodge City. <laughs> well, that's a recommendation, all right. It sure is. But uh, can he actually make a living uh, working at his trade like that, disposing of people? Uh, uh, his prices are low. He makes his money on volume. <laughs> and uh, what are the going rates? Oh, it just depends on what you want. Now, a plain old-fashioned bushwhack, and that's $35. Saloon brawl with a chandelier and a couple of busted bottles, that's $50. And if you want to get real fancy, you have a challenge and shootout out of Main Street at high noon. That's $75. Moneyed people like that. What would you suggest? That is, I mean, if uh, you had someone that you wanted to put out of the way? Well, I can't suggest nothing like that. You know, the whole thing ain't exactly legal. <laughs> Well, you're going to get in trouble if you don't stop watering down your root beer. If you want the other sites pointed out to you around town, sir, just call on me. Be glad to do it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Portis, um, I'd like to do a little business with you. <laughs> what I'm about to suggest, I would like it to be as painless as possible. <laughs> Grandpa, you shouldn't be going into town. Orville is gunning for you. Which you tired dude never fired a gun in his life. Probably hired a gunfighter. Who do you reckon he hired, Mama? Well, that'll depend on who's in town. I seen Moose Dreyfus putting money in the bank the other day. I'm glad he's working. You know, this country's getting so soft, a gunslinger can't make a decent living. <laughs> Carol says Patch Portis is in town. 
Bargain counter Portis? He's a crying shame to the profession. I'm told he ain't ethical. He even advertises. <laughs> Uh, feller on the barn, Papa. I've been watching him. Be sure he falls into the hog wallow, dear, so she don't get hurt. <laughs> and that's what you call making a pig of yourself. <laughs> Lucy fainted again. Must be the heat. <laughs> Keep your eye on Moose Dreyfus. He's wearing his working clothes. <laughs> Stand where you are, Hanks. I think Orville hired him, dear. Glad to see his taste in gunsling is improving. <laughs> you ladies, step aside. I got business with the old man. Get on with it, Moose. I ain't got all day. Did you say that I was a dirty skunk? I ain't up on your bathing habits, but I'd say you was a skunk. Nobody calls me that. Go for your gun. He's a sweet boy at heart. <laughs> Getting sweet all the time. <laughs> I come to you under a flag of truce. Close the door. You're letting in the flies. <laughs> come in, Orville, dear. Hello, Effie. You're looking as lovely as ever. Uh, thank you, Orville. Uh, you look well, too. I'll make some tea. Uh, come in, Orville, and sit down. Well, uh, thank you. I, I won't sit down, Effie, but I... I just came here to tell you, Andrew, that over the long haul, I think that you have treated me very shabbily. Have you any idea what this trip has cost me? The stagecoach fare from Wichita, and the hotel rooms, and the meals, and the preparations for the wedding? And that wreath, that wasn't cheap, you know. <laughs> it was beautiful, though. And such a sweet thought. <laughs> and those incompetent gunslingers. Uh, you have no idea what they cost me. Everything's sky high nowadays. <laughs> I must truthfully say to you that I am disappointed and disillusioned after I've heard so much about Western hospitality. The West ain't what it used to be, Orville. <laughs> Enough to make a fella cry. <laughs> That's all I have to say, so I'll be going now. Uh, you sure you won't have some tea? Uh, no, no, it makes me gurgle. <laughs> well, goodbye, Effie. Goodbye, Orville. It was real thoughtful of you to come clear out here from Wichita and go to so much trouble, just for me. It warms my heart. Well, I tried. I tried, Effie. Have you another kiss for this cheek, Effie? Thank you. Till we meet again. Goodbye, Henrietta. It's been nice knowing you. Oh, I'm sorry you can't stay longer. And goodbye, Andrew. Don't worry about yourself, but do take care of Effie, won't you? <laughs> Next time, don't go assuming I'm dead till you hear it from me. <laughs> well, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye, Orville. <laughs> See you in five years. <laughs> I wonder what would have happened if Grandma had married Orville. Oh, that's easy. I'd have had to arrest your grandma for bigamy. <laughs> Varmint over there in the bushes. <laughs> 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 